Well, in this video, we'll move to a new uh, topic on international humanitarian law and a new question, actually, which is the Geneva Conventions. What are the Geneva Conventions, the four Geneva Conventions, and the two additional protocols, or sometimes we can say, what are the three additional protocols, since one of them is not famous anymore? Actually, international humanitarian law in the previous lecture of this course uh, we were talking about the uh, classification of the armed conflicts, whether they are international ones or non-international ones. Now we will move to the applicable law, I mean the, in the uh, Geneva Conventions, the four Geneva Conventions and the two additional protocols. What are the origins of such uh, Geneva Conventions? Actually, the first Geneva Convention, it was about the amelioration and the the uh, improvement of the conditions of the wounded and armies when they are in the battlefield and this kind of conventions uh, was adopted in, 19, in 1864 and we can say that this is the cornerstone of the historical international humanitarian law since it was the first uh, birth of the international humanitarian law in the uh, modern way. So this was the first convention, and it it all it 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 was about only the cases of uh, the wounded people when they are in the battlefield, not in sea, not anywhere else. So this is uh, about the first Geneva Convention. This convention was amended after that it was first amended in 1906 uh, it was only regarding the same topic the amelioration of conditions of the wounded armies in the battlefield however in 1929 another modification to this convention had occurred but it wasn't actually about the amelioration of conditions of wounded on the on the battlefield it was uh, regarding a new uh, convention that was adopted in 1922 which uh, relates the treatment of prisoners of war so in this date actually 1929 there was two kind of topics uh, were regulated within the Geneva Convention number one Geneva Convention regarding the amelioration of the wounded in the battlefield however the second one is about the treatment of the prisoners or prisoners of war okay 1934 the international conference of the red cross in tokyo they uh, the states uh, who were in that conference they approved a text of a new international convention regarding the protection of the civilians when there is kind of a uh, conflict between two uh, uh, states or when there is uh, a case of the belligerent occupation but actually no action was taken on that text so states refused to convene a diplomatic conference in order to decide on this treaty whether to adopt it or not to adopt it so the uh, the, uh, the 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 international world war it has started that time and what it was only after the 1949 and after the Second World War had ended, states, they uh, adopted and agreed to adopt the four Geneva Conventions, uh, the first one regarding the amelioration of conditions of the wounded in the battlefield, the second one at the sea, and the third one regarding treating of the prisoners of war, and they added the last one regarding protection of civilians and regarding the detainees and the internees. So, these four main conventions, they represent the cornerstone of the international humanitarian law in the modern, in the modern shape of the international uh, humanitarian law. While the first three Geneva Conventions of 1949 grew out of the same existing treaties on the same subjects, like the first subject uh, that was regulated in the first Geneva Convention was regarding the amelioration of the uh, conditions of the people in the battlefield and after that after 1949 it was about the uh, con the conditions of the people at the sea and 
since 1929 there was a treaty actually regarding the three uh, prisons of war but what is the new after 1949 the new was uh, that the states in the international uh, level they they accepted a new kind of uh, Geneva Conventions which uh, relate only uh, the uh, cases of the occupation the the cases of the protection of the civilians uh, during wars so uh, this was a new uh, topic that was added to uh, Geneva Conventions 1949 uh, so as, as we mentioned here, the Fourth Geneva Convention was absolutely new since uh, it was the new IHL treaty which deals specifically with the protection of the civilians during the armed conflict. Okay, uh, in a nutshell we can, we can say that we have four types of Geneva Conventions and they are applicable uh, during armed conflicts, especially international armed conflicts. Uh, we, we, we do not deny that these, uh, th these um, conventions uh, apply only to n the international armed conflict, but we can add that the third uh, common article 3 uh, or the common article 3 that is implied within these four Geneva conventions is also applied to cases of non-international armed conflict. Anyway, the first Geneva convention is, regard, is regarding the wounded sex soldiers on land and members of the armed forces medical services. The second Geneva convention, it talks about the same people but when they are at the sea. And it talk about the members of the naval forces. The third Geneva Conventions, uh, briefly, it talks about uh, prisoners of war. And number four, the fourth Geneva Convention, it talks about mainly civilians, such as, I mean, the topics that, that are included within and covered with the fourth Geneva Convention is the foreign civilians on the territorial parties to the conflict, including the refugees the civilian and the occupied territories and the civilian detainees and internees and we will shed the light on the differences between the detainees and the internees and the prisoners of war and finally and and we will also discuss whether the palestinian and the israeli jails are of a detainee character or internees character or even prisoners of war so what are the cases of these uh, palestinian uh, people and finally the medical and religious personnel or even the civil defense units according to the fourth Geneva uh, conventions so this is actually about the the four Geneva conventions how they evolved and what are the topics that they uh, cover what are the main topic that they cover now what are the two additional protocols or the three additional protocols actually the existence of the two additional protocols was because of some reasons and circumstances and the main reason is the case of decolonization uh, when decolonization was ended and the, w when there was fight against this case of decolonization then in this case uh, we do not have specific rules that applies to uh, that apply to these cases. I mean, the case of decolonization, and actually, because there was a great need and a pressing need to rules that are applicable to cases of wars of national reparation, and also the civil wars, because the civil wars in these times are the most important and the most uh, famous and well-known ones so there was no uh, a, a sufficient rules that are, that are applicable to these cases so we need new developed uh, uh, articles regarding these cases whether they are included within the uh, the uh, the same Geneva uh, conventions or by creating and concluding new treaty which can discuss these matters so the un the universe in this case they adopted a new uh, treaties i mean protocols and these protocols one of them is the first additional protocol and it it was about the cases of international armed conflict decolonization